Welcome to the Watermark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Simarca de Agua, a podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com Soho, Brand Studio Whiteybackdrops.com For over eight years, Yulia Panchenko has established herself and her work in Orlando, Florida and influenced the art world around the globe with her high-end unique work. She has mastered the art of lighting and shadows along with intricate posing to produce her own recognizable brand and photography style. She's an established educator and the founder of Belief in Boudoir, the most complete boudoir course with over 20 hours of educational content. Julie has presented and worked photo walks for Imaging USA and YPPI, and also serves as an ambassador for Ellen Chrome and Light and Motion. She has been a speaker for events such as Professional Imaging 2022 in the Netherlands, where she shared her techniques and artistic approach to boudoir photography. Her work extends beyond just boudoir, into wedding and portrait photography with her very unique style. In 2021, Julia expanded the Belief in Boudoir platform and turned it into the largest boudoir photography research and educational platform for all boudoir photographers, models, and clients around the world. In 2022, her boudoir photography world tour produced publication in multiple states and sold out in months in advance, adding visual to her extensive black and white photograph collection and expanding her influence across the country. This is No Watermark Photography Podcast. Welcome, Julia Panchenko, boudoir photographer. And hello, hello. We have here a super special guest from Orlando. We have Julia Panchenko. She's a boudoir photographer. Well, she's an extraordinary photographer, but today we have her here to talk about specifically about boudoir photography because I'm curious about this kind of art. Hello, Julia. How are you? Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me at your podcast. I'm really honored. Okay, Julia, let's jump into our conversation because I know you're super busy, but can you explain us uh, in a few words, what is boudoir? Uh, boudoir is a beautiful genre of photography. It's, a, it's very, very popular here in the US and I believe it's getting its popularity in Europe as well. I've been to Europe this year and I've asked other photographers and I and the, it's not as popular, but I think it's getting there. It's, uh, to me, boudoir photography, it's all about beautiful forms of female's body. It's about sensuality and it's about um, shapes and forms. So uh, it's also a great uh, empowerment tool. So it really uh, empowers women. It, uh, it increase their sensuality in general and increase their, boost their confidence. So that's what boudoir is to me and to my clients at least. Okay. And what makes a great boudoir photo? Because I have seen a lot of photos and sometimes I think like, mm, maybe this is not boudoir. Maybe this is going somewhere else. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I believe uh, lighting and posing makes the difference. So if you learn how to um, perfect your lighting and if you perfect your posing and you, if you're mainly focusing on highlighting the best features of your subject's body, then you will achieve a beautiful, tasteful boudoir image. So when I photograph, I always keep in mind uh, the art. And I get inspired by, even when I go to Europe, I always go to museums and galleries and get inspirations from um, paintings and from sculptures. And to me, boudoir is a form of art. So I, I, I see the art and I try to create similar with uh, my subjects, with the, with the subject's body I photograph. So uh, 
I don't put too much sexuality into this process. Uh, yes, we women want to look sensual, we want to look beautiful, but to me, it's again more about the body, about the shape, about the beauty of a female's body, because our body is beautiful. And depending how uh, we pose and depending on what lighting scenario we have is going to look the best or it may um, it may look uh, yeah. not tasteful. <laughs> not tasteful, yeah. Exactly. So, okay. Uh, let me recap here. So it is more about sensuality, not sexuality. So because if it is sexuality, then it's for, a, for another market. Let's uh, call it this way. And uh, and you mentioned also that you work with different shapes and with the empowerment of the, of the women and, and their bodies. How do you manage a session uh, with, with a regular customer? I mean, who is your customer? Yes, my customer is a regular woman. Uh, it, I photograph women, I would say in their between 25 to 50, that's the, the, the age. Mm -hmm. um, and there are different reasons why they do that. Uh, some women, they wanted to do it as a gift for their significant others. Yes. Uh, I photograph a lot of brides. It's a very popular bridal gift uh, for the future husband. Um, so, and it, it's, it, I photograph women who want to uh, be photographed when they're turning 30s or 40 or 50. So um, just to celebrate to, themselves. Yeah, just celebrate themselves. Exactly. And um, but they, yeah, they're regular women, uh, different shapes. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it doesn't really matter. We're all beautiful. And as I mentioned, females body is very beautiful. It all depends how we present it and how we highlight those best features. And I know uh, as a photographer, I like to be always, you know, behind the camera. I learned like in the last year how to, you know, love myself a little bit more in my shape, in my body, in my essence. And I know it is not easier to pose in front of a camera and to follow directions. It, it is really complicated. But how do you manage to, you know, to break that ice? How is your uh, technique to make that person feel comfortable and, you know, explode that, you know, sensuality and bring it out and, you know, make, you know, with these beautiful photos you make? Right. Um, I... When I started out boudoir photography, I wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, we, I, so what I, I did, I hired models or people who just want women who want to be photographed, and I practiced with them. I created mood board. I uh, tried to replicate what I see, and I was even trying to. Um, I had like a small personal project pose of the day when I was uh, doing one pose each day and I was posting it on Instagram. Yeah. So I learned a lot from models. I learned a lot practicing in front of the mirror and I introduced everything what I learned with the models uh, to my clients. I'm not a fast shooter. I take my time. I pose, I show the pose, I pose my subject, and then I perfect it. I don't just shoot, 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 just to, you know, maybe um, I'll get one sh good shot out of 10. Okay. I, I prefer to show the pose and then perfect it from there until I get exactly what I need. So it comes with practice. Uh, as anything else we do, it's repetition and practice, practice, practice. Um, so I, I did a lot of practice, I would say. I, I love that what you just said, because uh, most of our uh, guests, they said, yeah, I'm a fast shooter and, you know, but it's different and it is good in the end. Your technique is like, you take your time, you explain the things well to the model, you know, and then something magical will come up and maybe your cooling uh, process is really fast because you have, you know, like you, you perfected the shots and you know which poses and which photos are good in the end. So that's amazing. I love that quality and, and it shows in your work. I love it. So this first time I, I hear like 
I'm not a fast shooter and you're yeah, proud of that. I accept <laughs> it. It's fine <laughs> not to be fast. No, I love it. I love it. That is good. I, really I, honest. Also, it's, it's not a lifestyle photography, uh, oh, but when I photograph couples for boudoir, yes, I do uh, have to photograph a little bit faster and I capture the moment and their emotions and their connection. Yes. So that's a little bit different. I used to photograph weddings. Yes. It requires different skills and I had to be a fast shooter. Um, but again, when you're in the studio and you're working with one person and it's uh, all about perfecting the pose and making your lighting look good, then you, I, I take my time. And yeah, that also I, shows that, uh, you know, I'm not in, in hurry and uh, it's an experience for them to be in my studio, uh, to have their hair and makeup done and to have some wine or champagne or um, and then start slowly, not just like uh, come in, undress, uh, take some photos and leave the studio. So I always tell my clients, this is your day and it's it's I want us to celebrate who you are what you achieved in life and your personality uh, so come to the studio completely relaxed because again you're going to have fun and then plan your day afterwards uh, continue it with your significant other or maybe with your girlfriends and go out and uh, do it a complete day for yourself Nice. And I had the opportunity to see you uh, doing a live uh, demonstration at the Professional Imaging uh, this year here in the Netherlands. And I love how you explain the movement and how you control the light. It for, To me, it was like, wow, mind blowing. And when I saw you, I said, I have to invite her to the podcast because so this is something and more and more, it is more popular. So let's talk about technicalities. And I would like to ask you, what was your first camera? What, how did you start? I started uh, with, I always, I always been with Nikon or Nikon for yes. <laughs> yes. European market. Uh, and I started with 7100, I believe, or 7000. Mm -hmm. um, and then I moved to, uh, so I started with a crop sensor and then I continued with a full frame. My first full frame was uh, Nikon 610. Yes. And now I'm shooting with um, Nikon D815. So um, I, I believe you don't need expensive camera equipment. Uh, all you need is one light, one camera, one lens. Uh, and lens, and I'll actually show you this lens. Mm -hmm. and it has been with me for over eight years, I believe. And it's in, it's not expensive lens at all. It's just 15 millimeter lens. And until today, I do my sessions with this lens. So it's not about lens. It's yes, of course, it lenses make it sharper, make the quality look better. But um, it's 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 the lighting, I, I believe, that makes the difference. So if your light is perfect, then your images will look the same um, and your composition and your posing of course amazing and uh, it is always with the artificial light or do you also do photos with natural light yeah uh, great question I do combine uh, mm -hmm. I mix natural light with artificial light I start uh, I in my studio I have two big windows so I start with the natural light combining with artificial. Um, and then I continue just, again, I, I, I mix uh, ambient light because I don't eliminate uh, ambient light. Um, I, I just try to balance it. Mm -hmm. um, and if I want a little bit moodier, uh, style of images again I would manipulate with either my set camera settings or my my lighting uh, my light power and then at the very end I'll do something what I called fine art nude session and that's where I eliminate my ambient light completely and I'll start building up uh, the highlights by using one or two lights 
Okay, and I'm gonna do a pause here because I want to remind you that Julia is launching a new course and can you tell us about it? Uh, yes, we do have an, an online course already. So it's a um, boudoir photography master course bundle with over 20 uh, courses in the bundle. Uh, the courses are about um, lighting, posing, about I introduce my students to my best selling poses, poses on different uh, furniture, for example, uh, 10 best poses on the couch, on the floor, by the wall, uh, laying poses, standing poses on the chair. So a variety of poses with the PDFs included besides the video. We have um, courses on lighting um, and I introduce uh, photographers to four lighting styles, um, um, uh, silhouette, semi-silhouette, uh, low-key and high-key. And we talk about marketing as well. Uh, we talk about posing floor, it, uh, over 20 hours of content in one bundle course. Uh, and now we're currently, we're working on Fine Art Nude course. It's going to be shorter. It's not a bundle. It's not a part of the bundle. It's a completely different course, but it's only about Fine Art Nude. And we're also working on um, um, maternity boudoir, which is yes. very popular now, and um, some other courses that are coming soon, uh, including the couples boudoir. Um, so it's a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's on the big platform. The platform is called Believe in Boudoir. So it's believeinboudoir.com, and all the courses, including the bundle course, is on the platform. Amazing. I'm gonna leave all the information on the description box of this episode where you can find everything related to Julia, I mean, social media, her uh, YouTube channel, everything. So you can find it there. So don't worry. You talk about uh, boudoir categories. So you said maternity boudoir. What else? Maternity boudoir, couples boudoir, uh, fine art nude boudoir, uh, bridal boudoir. It's similar to the rest, but it's, I would say, a little bit brighter and um, uh, brighter style, more softer. Joyful, um, yeah. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Mm, so yeah, actually boudoir genre, if you look at it, it seems like very narrow niche, but if you look closer, you can target so many different people. Wow, so, and male boudoir? Male boudoir, yes. Mm, is it popular? Yeah. yeah. It is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's popular among people who are athletes, mm -hmm. who are, um, let's say they started working out and they achieved something and they want to, again, celebrate uh, their achievement. Uh, people who are on dating sites, <laughs> they yes. want some images to put it on the dating site, um, or again, they do it for their significant other. But um, women mainly do that for uh, their husbands or for their boyfriends. Um, so they tend to do it more often than male. Okay, and this is a, a tricky question. Okay, how much retouching is there in the industry? Do you do, do, do you try to reinforce like, okay, accept yourself or, you know, the client is always asking, can you, you know, remove the cellulite or, uh, you know, things like that? Yeah, I ask my client if they want to be perfect in the photos or they prefer to be you know we don't touch any imperfections and some okay. people do say oh i love my cellulite i am who i am i'm not gonna hide it and i like the scar here and i don't care and then it's okay better for me <laughs> let's retouch but some people they do say oh uh, this is the thing that is uh, I'm not comfortable with and I want to look better and then I do retouch but I don't do um, I don't liquefy or I don't do major body retouch I okay. do I try to pose in a way that it works and uh, so when I photograph, I always show images to my clients during the session. And I show, most of the time, I show every all the images that we capture right after the session, uh, and they're raw, they're unedited. I don't touch up anything when I'm showing those images because um, 
they look good and I don't need to like, yeah, I, I, I of course I tell them, sorry, this is not a uh, retouched image and you, you can tell me what exactly you want me to touch up. So I would remove blemishes or whatever you're not happy with. Okay. Um, but I don't do major retouch. So, and they see it and they see that they are beautiful mm -hmm. right in, in my camera you know, without any retouching. So I try to perfect my shot in camera. And um, yes, I do uh, skin retouch and facial retouch after the shoot uh, if they want me to, to do it. Okay, do you do the, your own post-production or do you have a team who does that? Uh, I do have in-house editor. Um, I don't outsource it somewhere, like I don't send images to anyone, but mm -hmm. I have someone who uh, works with me in the office and does my uh, editing. Amazing. And uh, what are, what about the essentials for, uh, if, if I want to start in boudoir photography, what's supposed to be, okay, what should I get? What should I buy to start? Uh, to start, you need a camera. Mm -hmm. I would go with a full frame camera from the beginning. I would invest a little bit more. And you need one camera, one lens uh, for boudoir photography. Fifty millimeter would work. Uh, it works perfectly. Uh, again, I still I'm still using the same lens for so many years. Uh, you need at least one light and one modifier uh, for boudoir photography. Uh, I prefer strip soft box because I can highlight the whole body from head to toe. So you need a narrow type of light. You can control direction of your light with uh, a strip soft box. I use Ellen Chrome. They have amazing quality of mm -hmm. soft boxes uh, and. Uh, I personally use continuous strobe hybrid light. So it's the light that has a uh, battery. So if you are shooting somewhere else, uh, you can use the battery, it's battery yes. powered. But if you are in the studio, you can just uh, plug it in and yes. uh, it, it, you, you you will use it throughout the, the session, throughout the day. It's an amazing quality light because it's, it has capabilities of giving the continuous light. So when I photograph, I see um, where the highlights fall on my subject's body. And then when I photograph, I switch to burst and I get the maximum power uh, from the stroke. So it works again perfectly for me because uh, I can see what I photograph um, and I get the maximum power. Awesome. And which model of Elinchrom are you using at the moment? If, if you want, I can show you the It's okay. Software. It's okay. Yeah. Yes. Go for uh, it. This is the softbox that I'm using. Um, on. Yes. Beautiful uh, studio, by the way. <laughs> thank you. It's a little bit of a mess <laughs> right now. No and, and I'll show you the... <laughs> I use Ellen Chrome as well. Uh, I use uh, Ellen Chrome ELB uh, for, uh, 500, uh, yes. that's a battery pack uh, with a flash. I use Ellen Chrome 1, it's also an amazing light. And I use Reflex uh, S, this is by Light and Motion. It's very mm -hmm. compact and it's very light and this is a continuous strobe hybrid light um i love them so and what about the props because uh, as a food photographer we need to have you know backdrops and you know some cutlery and this and that but what about boudoir essentials mm. in terms of props you can photograph boudoir in an empty room Okay. Really, again, to me, for many people, for many photographers, it's all about ambience and how fancy the room is. Yeah, if you, that's your style, of course. Uh, my focus mainly on my subject, so I really don't worry about too many props. But of course, it's easier to pose and create different variety of poses if you have uh, a couch, at least a lounge chair, a regular chair. Uh, a bed. Uh, I don't have a bed in my studio because my studio is not too big. So I have air mattress. Okay. So when I need air mattress, I inflate it and I uh, use different bedding sets. And yes. when I don't need it, I put it away. Yes. So, um, but even if you don't have it, you can 
uh, use a blanket and put it on the floor and there you go you can do a variety of laying poses on the floor so there is always a solution some people they say oh i don't have a studio uh i don't have space i don't have props i don't have equipment none of that matters you can start in your own home that's how i started i started photographing in my master bedroom so of course it wasn't very convenient especially for my family members because i had to keep out the whole family out of the house <laughs> when i was working with a client because i need the whole house to be quiet and that time i had my one-year-old baby at home so uh, yes, it wasn't easy, but that's how I started. So, and I started with natural light, uh, just the window light. And again, one camera, one lens. Um, if you are not comfortable doing it in your own house, then you can do it in Airbnb or in a hotel or in your client's uh, house. So there's so many options. Um, again, it's, it's just, you don't need much for boudoir photography. Amazing. And let's talk about inspiration. Who do you uh, follow for close inspiration? Do you have a, you know, a photographer like, let's say, Helmut Newton, or what was your source of inspiration? I know you go to museums when you have the chance. I do find inspiration from magazines a lot. I look through magazines. I look through, I, I love galleries. So even here in Orlando area, we have a gallery where I always go and there's so many uh, uh, artists who were drawing or painting from uh, of a uh, nude uh, model, nude yes. women. So uh, there's so many sources of inspiration. Um, but mainly, mainly galleries, I would say. Amazing. And are, do you prefer like black, or, black and white or color photography? What is your preference? So I used to do wedding photography. And if you look at my wedding, wedding photography Instagram, you'll see that it's more cinematic. It's colorful. Yes. Um, I do floral portraits as well. Uh, and if you look at my Instagram for floral portraits, they're very vibrant. They're a very very colorful. Yeah. Uh, I love colors. I love to experiment with colors. Uh, when I do boudoir, I do photograph in color, but then I turn them into black and white because I love moody style of boudoir. And um, and just to keep my uh, my social media consistent mm -hmm. uh, and similar, I post everything in black and white just to make my page look mm, more. <laughs> all <laughs> so and the same I do with the website also on the website I have a gallery that says uh, in color photographs so because not everyone wants black and white so they want uh, prefer colors and um, especially to show the skin tone of my client mm -hmm. and you need those images in color and yeah I, I love images in color but just for boudoir I prefer black and white, but not all the time. It's like, not all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. And can you tell us a little bit what happens when a client book a session with you? How many hours? How is the process? How everything like a step by step? <clears throat> so we start, um, clients find me through mainly either social media or Google. Yes. And they reach out to me through email. Uh, they can even schedule their consultation on the website uh, before they send me email. So it's either this way. So it goes directly to my CRM system. And then I reach out to that person <clears throat> or they email me and I introduce them a little bit about what I do and my pricing, my starting point. I don't okay. uh, uh, tell about my packages, but I say... Um, my my prices my packages start from uh, yes. this, this amount and that, that yeah. amount. yes so in this way they know for sure if they want to continue uh, to do a consultation with me or it's something out of their budget um, and as a photographer I value my time I don't want to spend time on a person who uh, is not willing to invest this amount of money into this project uh -huh. so 
after that, we schedule consultation. Uh, I do mainly Zoom consultation. I used to do uh, in studio when, before pandemic, but pandemic changed our lives and we started doing things differently. Now it's very convenient. We see each other in Zoom and I can do a studio tour. I can show them around and I'll show what, uh, I'll talk about each package and I'll show them final product. Um, that's the, for me, it's very important not to do that consultation over the phone. It's important for me to see the person because when person uh, is ready to do a Zoom call, it means they are interested in that and they're not just, you know, wasting your time trying to uh -huh. find out how and what. So, and uh, this allows me also to show the final product. And I love my final product. I work with uh, Confoli, which is a European company, by the way. Uh, they're based in Greece and I show them the albums that I offer to my clients. And that's oh. the selling point. So it is not digital. It is uh, the whole experience, the whole package with the album and everything. I don't do I don't give digitals I give digitals uh, if they purchase my uh, most expensive package mm -hmm. uh, with the most luxurious product so that way they get um, all the digital images awesome and um, yeah and the person has to come with uh, all their outfits or do you provide uh, everything for them a makeup artist and how is that so after they are ready to book, uh, I tell them to leave a deposit and we schedule the date. Uh, when deposit is paid, I book my makeup artist and we start preparing for that, uh, for the photo session. Usually people book me two, three, four, six months uh, in advance. So we have enough time to prepare. I don't uh, provide with any outfits, I think. Some people they do, but uh, maybe because I cannot wear anybody else um, wardrobe. So I feel like it's very personal yes. and I ask them to bring and invest into their outfits and everybody has different tastes. Um, I do, um, uh, I do have videos on my um, website where I tell my clients how to prep themselves. So I used to do them in person, uh, but I realized that it takes lots of my time. And then people don't remember most of what I've said because yeah. um, there is like six months. <laughs> we have six months before the session that they tend to forget uh, easily and fast. Um, so what I did, I, I recorded uh, myself and explain how to prep yourself, what to do, what not to do, what to bring. I have um, a, a page where they can see what they should bring for the session, what I recommend with the links where to shop. So they can even go click and buy one or another item from different online stores. Um, and on the day of the session, um, the makeup artist and is waiting for my clients. So we spend about one hour or and a half, two hours to create a look, to work on hair and makeup. And when she's ready, we start the photo session. Uh, so it takes about two up to three hours to photograph. So as I mentioned, I take my time, I don't rush and I tell them you will spend half of the day in my studio. So be prepared. <laughs> I love how you have everything clear. It is all your steps one by one. It's like, okay, there's no way to, to get this wrong. Yes. And uh, you, people's expectations are so high right now because uh, so many services, so many uh, products that we're getting. So everything is um, in, in the US at least, uh, ex uh, customers' expectations are very high. Uh, they're very demanding now and you want to meet those expectations or exceed them. So you do need to provide a quality service and um, a great experience. Yes, it's all about experience. Exactly. And with this, my next question is, what are the most common mistakes when you're starting as a boudoir photographer or as a photographer? And what has been your personal experience with these mistakes? I know that probably from the past, you learned how to do your whole process. And now you know that you have to charge a deposit because 
a known show is like a really pity situation for the photographer if you don't have a deposit, so you're wasting your time. And, but in the end, can you name us or can you tell us from your experience, what have you learned from your mistakes? Because we all make mistakes, that's normal. Uh, yes, that's a good, good example of the deposit. Yes, I didn't charge deposit. That was a big mistake. Um, charging little, that was a mistake. Um, I would, people want to, and that happened to me. So I was at one point, I was still charging little, but my quality was good enough to actually start charging more. And then I realized that people, they're not booking me because when they ask how much and I tell how much and it just doesn't match because the quality is so good, but the price is so low that people, they think something is wrong mm -hmm. and people, they, they do want to spend money. Uh, when they spend money, they know that they're getting something good. It's uh, psychological. So uh, don't undervalue, uh, start charging more than what you think people would pay for it uh, because they, they will pay for it. And that was my mistake, I think. CRM system, something that I think as soon as you start, as soon as you open your business, that should be part of it, the good CRM system. Yes something that will make you look as a professional photographer or a good business, good business model and help you um, do all the bookkeeping, scheduling, communication with your clients. So now I don't really need to ask, hey, how would you like to pay? I tell them how to pay. I'm going to tell them, I'm going to send you a link right now mm -hmm. and everything is online. Just click on the link and pay, you know, and it's easier because now it's not me who is charging. It's my CRM yes. <laughs> system <laughs> that is charging them. So no more awkward situations. I love it. I do that. You know, yeah, it is, and sometimes it happens. You you're done with the shoot, and then she's walking out, and I I like okay. How would I say? How would I say? Hey, do you want to pay for your session? And yeah, it happens. And the invoice right away. <laughs> yeah, but no, they, of course they pay afterwards. But that that moment when you just want, you have to verbalize it somehow. Yeah. And, ah, I'm more, I'm an artist. I'm not a business person. So you need to invest in it and it's not expensive and uh, set it up and make it work for you. Yeah. And I know that uh, also give you a serious look as a professional when you have these kind of systems, because, okay, everything is already systemized. And plus the, this charging part, the awkward part that, okay, sometimes you are like, mm, you know, afraid, like, no. So you have this system that does everything for you. And if the person doesn't click on the link in 14 days, for example, there's another reminder and then yes. legal fees. Yeah. So, you know, it is really yeah. handy. Yes. And I don't, uh, I don't take care of re reminders anymore because this is automatically system for you. So, exactly. Yeah. That is amazing, Julia. I really enjoyed this conversation, this interview. You are so open and so heart welcoming and so positive. I'm really, really, really happy to have you here. Thank you so much for having me here. I was say it was fun answering all the questions. I hope uh, it will help uh, beginner photographers or um, anyone who wants to start boudoir, but they have some doubts. Uh, it's a beautiful genre. You have to try and it will fit other genres of photography. If you're a wedding photographer, you can still do boudoir because you're photographing brides and brides, they need uh, that for their um, fiance as a gift. <laughs> or if you're a portrait photographer, that's you can introduce it to your clients and add it to your portfolio. So if you're doing maternity shoots, you can do maternity boudoir. So yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's an additional income so not even if you're not ready to just stop doing everything else and start boudoir you can still add it to your portfolio and i think generate uh, more money amazing can you remind us please your social handles i'm gonna leave it any uh, leave it anyways on the description box but uh, for boudoir it's yp uh, boudoir uh, my website is the same, uh, uh, ypboudoir.com. And our platform for photographers is uh, believeinboudoir.com. 
and the same for Instagram, Believe in Boudoir. So I invite you all to go to Julia uh, Believe in Boudoir uh, account or on her reels. She's teaching you how to post for Boudoir. This is amazing. She had, I don't know how many videos, but they are so handy and so informative. And she's the model, by the way. So all right, thank you so that. much for, for, for following. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've started doing those reels and people they're loving it. And I they, love them. They say they, they're very helpful. And I try to introduce in each reel uh, to three different poses that are very kind of like they're going with the flow. So I've just done my three reels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to post them today. Nice. Thank you so much, Julia. I wish you a great day. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching and for listening to this episode. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.